In a technical sense, socketing is really all you need for doing networking. You can do all of your communication through sockets. It's kind of like saying that an input stream that writes bytes is all that you need because it's sufficient to write out anything that you would uh, need to or reading or writing. Um, but in practice, you don't want to do all of your communication at a byte level and doing sockets can make things harder as applications get bigger. So if you did the chat application and you extended it to add private messages, you realize that there was a challenge there in that we have a single socket uh, for each user. And when we get a message from that socket, we have to look at that message and decide whether this should be a private message or something else. You can imagine in a large application, we wouldn't just have two types of things we would be sending back and forth. We might have a very large number of them. And as the number of different types of messages that you're sending between the computers grows, it gets harder and harder to organize that on your own. On the JVM, there is an alternate way for us to do things, and that is to use RMI, Remote Method Invocation. Now, at a fundamental level, RMI is just opening sockets and talking between computers with sockets. Uh, it also uses serialization, which we've seen with streams. But as your applications get larger, it makes it easier to hand, to deal with the communication. You are you get to operate at a higher level. And the way that RMI works is literally, as the name says, remote method invocation. You get to call methods on objects that are remote. So instead of packing something up and, and sending it through a, a socket as a message that has to be unpackaged and interpreted on the other side, that's all happening underneath the hood. And you just call a method. And the, the system packages stuff up, sends it across the network, unpackages it, does the call on the other computer, and then packages up and sends you back the result. There is a package in the Java API called RMI that has a number of sub packages on it. And so we're going to be dealing with a number of the different parts of this. Now, when you write an RMI application, there are really a few steps that you need to, to take. And so in order to illustrate these, we're going to once again write a simple chat program uh, but it's not going to be quite as simple as the previous one. Um, it's, it's going to have a GUI on it and potentially the ability to send more different types of messages. So I want to make two, actually, I'll make two Scala objects. Um, we'll talk about what the different steps are in building a... Uh, an RMI application. So I'm going to make my RMI chat client and I'm also going to make an RMI chat server. So I made both of these as objects. But it turns out the first step when you're making RMI applications, and so I'll, I'll write down these steps here in comments. Step one is to make remote interfaces, uh, which are in, Java, in Scala, they will be traits. Now, I call these remote interfaces because they are just a list of methods and they should be annotated with at remote. So I'm going to say at remote trait and I will call this the remote client. Similarly, inside of our server, I am going to have at remote trait remote server. Now what goes inside of these two are methods that can be called remotely. And it turns out that every one of these methods will have the ability to throw a remote exception. Because all of this is going across the network, things can go wrong. You know, the network can go down. Uh, but by adding the at remote, we make things simpler for us. Technically what's happening is this is a trait and our trait extends the Java RMI remote and all of the methods inside of it uh, throw this uh, exception 
but by putting at remote we it takes care of all of those things for us so we put our methods inside of here okay so what are the types of methods that we want inside of our remote client well all of our clients are going to have a name so I'm going to make it so that other code the name is a remote def so that other computers could ask for a client's name I am going to have a message now this is this is a method that is called on the client so this is when the client receives a message someone is sending it a message they are going to tell them who it came from which will be another remote client because it's the clients that send messages and then whatever text came inside of there and this one is just going to return unit because it just does something it should print the the text out or since we're going to write a GUI add the text to that GUI um, and then I would also like all of our clients are going to have a list of all of the clients that are currently connected to the server and so I'm going to put in a method here called client update where we specify a sequence of remote client and this one is also going to return unit so if something changes with the clients on the server the server can send a can call client update on the clients and they will be able to update their lists in the GUI okay so that is our uh, remote client our remote server would have a number of methods in it as well so for example def connect would be something where a client which is a remote client says that they are connecting um, and for now I'll have this return unit we might decide that we want some information back from that but that's fine um, def disconnect so there is a client who has decided to stop running and so they're going to tell the server hey I'm disconnecting now a def get clients so I want the clients to be able to ask the server for a sequence of all of the different clients okay and we should also be able to give the server a public message that comes from a particular client and has that string and so this public message would wind up being sent out to all of the different clients so those are our remote interfaces step one done step two I'm not actually going to write all the code for all of these as we go through because that would take a long time but I at least want to start the most of the steps we have to make implementations of these interfaces and I could make these as classes uh, or I could make them as objects if I'm happy with them being singletons so in this case right now I think I'm happy with this being a singleton we'll find out um, as as we go along if we need to change that but when you do this it has to extend our trait and it also has to extend one of the types that's provided in RMI that allows something to basically be an RMI object and in this case I am going to extend this thing called unicast remote object and then this one is going to be with a remote client And of course that's unhappy now because we don't have any of these methods in there over on the server extends unicast remote object with remote server and that will too will be unhappy so step two is uh, make implementation that extends unicast remote object and the remote interface whatever that interface is for this particular implementation whether it's a class or an object okay so that's step number two um, 
And of course, we will have to fill in all of those methods. I'm not going to take the time to do that right now because, well, that will take several videos for us to do. Step three. Um, we need to have the server bind itself to a uh, to something that's called a, a, an RMI registry. Okay? So there has to be this program running someplace that is this registry and we need to bind to it. And the way we do that is inside of Java RMI there is a class called naming that has both a bind method and a rebind method. The bind method, if there's something that already has that name, we'll throw an exception. The rebind, if there's something that already has that name, will kick it off and use this one instead. So I'm going with that. So this is going to be our chat server, is the name I'm going to give it. And the object is our server here. So bind to RMI registry is step number three. Step number four is on the client side now, we so the server would run first and it would bind itself. On the client side, we need to look up the server. So the server will be set to, once again, this is inside of naming, dot, there is a lookup method where we give it the string and our string has to agree that, so we use the name chat server, and that will give us back the object uh, there. Now, we'll have to play a little bit more with this because right now it's just a remote and we need it to be a remote server, so we'll work on that when we come back and look at, uh, at how to actually do some of the details of, of the implementation. So, client does a name lookup, and then step number five is that we need an RMI registry running someplace. Now, it turns out one RMI registry can serve lots of various programs, so you only really need to run one on your computer, and you can do it from command line. Doing that is challenging, though, because it has to be in the right class path to see all of your compiled code. The easiest way to do that is inside of the API, under Java RMI registry, there is a locate registry, which has a method called create registry. And you can give it a port number. The default port number is 1099. And that is the one that I'm going to use because it makes our life simpler uh, when we're doing other things. So bring up the registry. Now this, once again, could be done at command line. It might not happen every time you run the program. But I like to do it inside of my server I am going to do locate registry dot create registry on port 1099. And that does have the advantage that it automatically gets the right class path because it's part of our program here and everything will be happy. So these are the five steps. And this seems like it's more complex than the socketing. But the thing is, once you have stuff in place with these initial five steps, adding additional methods to your remote interfaces, adding more remote interfaces, basically building your system out is much easier than it would have been if we had taken the socketing approach. Socketing approach has a kind of an easier startup for a small application, but it doesn't grow as well. Uh, so we'll come back and we will be working on writing the various parts of this to make it so that we can do our chat in a GUI uh, using RMI.